Good morning and welcome back to Reviving an Idler. So this time it's going to be a very short video for you. Mainly I want to answer a question I got in the last um, video that I released and secondly I'm also looking for a little bit of help from some of the more experienced members that follow the channel. But before we go uh, and ask the question, I would like to just quickly describe some of the questions we've had about the sawn frames that I've made. Now the first part of the question was, um, why sawn frames? Well, the simple answer is sawn frames is what was in her before. All these frames that you see, the station frames, are sawn. So in order to keep her as true to how she was, I've decided to put them back in. Um, there are other options and those other options may come into play uh, in the future. I even quite like the Acorn to Arabella Colin Archer uh, style steamed rib. You know, two pieces steamed together and then nailed through to make a, a, a thicker solid frame as well. I quite, quite like that idea. And depending on future wood availability that may well be a road I go down. Um, as for laminating and using epoxies and such, um, I've been limited due to the cold weather recently um, as to what I can actually do with that. Uh, personal preference for me as well is to try and avoid using laminations and, and glues and, and such uh, as much as possible and try and keep her as much solid wood uh, as I can. But that is an aesthetic um, decision more than a practical one. There's been a couple of questions raised about the choice of green uh, oak rather than, than dry oak. Um, and the answer is simply, it doesn't particularly matter. If I had gone for completely dry wood and put it into the boat, it would have expanded and it would have gone bigger. So it would have changed shape as the boat took up water and became wet. So that wood would have changed shape. If I'd gone with green, which is what I've got, it's going to change shape as the wood dries out. So the question lies in where is it going and how stable is it going to be. So what I'm looking for is wood to be of a similar moisture content to the planking and the rest of the boat around it so that there's not going to be as much movement. So that's what we're trying to dial into. Now the frames are still wetter than the wood around them and so to take account of that I have left the wood slightly oversized, about 3 to 5% in places. And that's also a reason that I've left such a large section in here, in this corner, because this being the widest part of the frame is going to suffer the most from shrinkage, shrinkage. So the more wood I can leave in there, the more wiggle room I have to adjust that rib in the future when it actually comes to fastening. So that's the, the main issue with the, the, the timber there. I don't want it to be too dry and I don't want it to be too green either so I'll let, I'll let this dry out a little bit. Once it has reached uh, equilibrium with the planking around it then I'll be able to do the final fairing and the final fitting as well. Similar situation with the, the floor that we've got here as well. Um, that has actually already changed shape from the templates I took initially um, and we're actually going to have to do a little bit more trimming and fairing in there anyway but again that's not going to be dry fitted. Um, for some time yet either. Now as for fastening, now she was fastened using iron nails as you saw in the last episode. I'm obviously not going to do that again. Um, I am going to go with nails I think. Now nailing right the way through the frames. Now I like that idea because I can see the fastening. I can see if it's going to be corroding, rotting, or if there's any damage done to it, if it's getting pulled or twisted. I can see what's happening um, in on the inside of the frame uh, as it's happening, um, better than I can a screw or, or any other kind of, of hidden nail. Um, that's, what I, that's my preference, uh, is to go with nails rather than screws. However, depending on the answers to the next question, um, that may well change as well. So the next question is this. I would like to draw your attention to the holes in the planking over here. Now I thought I'd release this episode a little bit early to try and uh, gain some group info or some group feedback on this one. I have a few ideas about how I can go about working around the holes in these planks or uh, repairing them. However, I just wanted to put my feelers out and get some feedback from you guys because there's a lot of experts uh, that are watching this channel and I value their opinions and I value everyone else's opinions. 
who has maybe done something like this in the past. Um, it's not something I've had to do before, so I would like to just get a little bit of feedback from you guys before I take the next step and um, see what you think. So, But for now, what we're looking at is fairly bad iron sickness moving through these planks. Now what I've done already is I've obviously removed the nail and I've put a 10mm drill bit through the hole just to try and open up the space. Now if I take a screw and just rub around in there you can see straight, all, straight away the embrittled material just flaking away. Now that obviously is not going to hold a fasting. So how do I get around this? Well initially what I was thinking was I would shift the rib over so that the rib is now sitting beside it, new holes into good wood and I would fasten that um, with nails or with screws uh, to the frame. But the predicament I have is that if this rib runs down it won't line up with the holes in the keel where the keel boat is supposed to go. I'll have to move the floor, I'll have to move the ribs. So if the new rib comes down and runs down this side, meeting the keel here, the new floor would have to sit here, covering up these holes, which is not a problem. However, it doesn't then line up with the holes in the keel or the keel bolt hole. Not so much an issue, I can plug the keel and I can plug the ballast keel as well, but I doubt I can easily drill a new hole through the ballast keel. If it comes to it, it's something we can do, but at the moment it's something I would like to try and avoid. So what other options do I have? Um, my first thought was then use tunnels. We can take a pretty big hole, clean out most of this, and I can then fit to the rib using a trunnel. Now the sawn frames are not overly thick, but I do think they're thick enough to use uh, trunnels or tree nails um, in their place. And I think that they'll be plenty strong enough um, in the planking then, even with a larger hole like that, spreading the load, to take the plank on the, the frame in its original position. The other option I have is plugging the holes with um, a dowel or even a tapered plug and then shifting over to the other side of it or just staggering it slightly, uh, putting the new fastening in over here. So for argument's sake, if we were fastening this plank here, this would be plugged, that would be plugged and we'd put a new fastener right there and right there for argument's sake. Um, I think that's quite a good idea, um, certainly the simplest and certainly the easiest and allowing me to use uh, metal fasteners as I had been before. The other option is a little bit more intensive and certainly more applicable higher up where we have a little bit more damage is fitting in a sort of tapered gerald. The back side of the, the planking or the outside you have the flat face and then cutting a V Gerald into the planking so it's sitting in a notch so that any fastener going through that is effectively acting like a washer. It's held tight going through the planking so we've got a V shape like that, like that, screw going through the whole lot and into the frame and holding everything nice and tight. Now I fully expect that the correct answer was going to be uh, probably a compound of all the above ideas. Um, this for example is likely to need a Gerald, that one could probably be done with a plug, etc, moving up the planking. And depending on what damage is where, we may have to change what we're doing. Um, as for fasteners, um, obviously if we go with tunnels, we might be able to get away with, with a lot in the planking. Um, if we're going to go with nails, obviously we need things to be nice and solid, and even more solid again if we're talking screws. So um, there's a lot to think about there. Um, I think my preference is to go with either plugging the holes um, with a plug and then use a long um, roved nail through the rib and the planking 
that would be my preference, um, or using a trunnel. Um, I think a trunnel is quite a good idea because we're then boring out to larger wood and better wood and then fastening through with that. My only concern with using a trunnel is that the actual frame is not an overly thick frame and if you're putting two quite close together through that the actual trunnel is going to be sitting quite close to the edge of, of the frame as well so I don't quite believe that, that's, there's, that there's enough material there to use a, a large enough trunnel uh, to do this because we are talking 10 mil at least I don't think you could go any smaller and remove the material that is required in the planking to do that um, and I think when you start talking bigger sizes like real like half inch three quarter inch uh, trunnels then you are I, I don't think it's possible at all that you could fasten that through the frames that we've got um, obviously all of that is blown out of the water if we then decide to move the frame over and then all we're doing is patching and plugging these holes so that they're watertight and we move the frame over so we're then running around a new holes into good wood all the way down. As I've said already that has the flip side of then affecting drilling through the ballast keel on the bottom which is going to be a, a difficult task for anyone. Alright so that's my thinking there. Um, Fire me a message in my Facebook, my Patreon, or in the comment section below the video as well. I'd love to hear from you, I'd love to discuss it with you. Uh, if you have got any other ideas that I've not discussed here, by all means fire them at me as well. I'm all ears on this one. And I look forward to, to hearing your comments. So that's about all I want to get done in this episode and like I say the reason for that is to try and get this out to you as quickly as possible so I can get as much feedback um, from everybody on how I should be progressing with that planking repair. Um, in the background however, I'm not being idle, I will be continuing to get these steam bent frames in. Uh, Mark and me have got plenty of roving to be done here and we've also got uh, a nice log arriving in the next week or so which will allow us to do uh, hopefully fingers crossed if everything's going well there's no crazy knots another four frames that's the aim of the game and i've definitely got enough larger wood to get another floor out of it as well so that's what we're looking forward to in the next couple of episodes whether it's going to be focusing on the planking repair or whether it's going to be progressing forward with uh, some more of these frames like i say my apologies for it being such a short episode um, Thank you for watching, thank you for sharing and subscribing, and if there has been any questions about anything in this episode at all, please let me know uh, in the comments, check out my Patreon, check out my Instagram or my Facebook page for more information as well. And just before I go, a huge thank you to the patrons we have on board with us, really, really appreciate your generosity and your kindness, and everybody else participating, simply watching these videos is a great support for the project and for my morale so uh, thank you very much for, for that as well for now that's it from me i'll hopefully check back in with you in the next two weeks or so take it easy bye for now and enjoy <laughs>